I mean, this is Konami. A lot of people have problems with Konami. They haven't been known for putting out many bangers lately. In fact, they're not known to put out anything lately. Right. So, they're not. But we put out a poll asking, um, do you plan on playing Silent Hill 2 Remake? And Daniel hit us with those results. Yeah, so at 21%, people said, yes, absolutely. I'm ready to be scared. At 26%, people said, I haven't decided yet. I don't really love being scared. And at 53%, people said, no, I'm too scared that it will suck. I love how you're able to string scared together with all three of those. I love. I That being said, it really doesn't look that scary. But, <laughs> um, you know, 53% of people saying they're not planning on playing this game. And that lines up to me. They're saying they're definitely not. Right. 26% of people saying they haven't decided. I don't know. It's not looking good. And I'm curious, like, how many of these people were already decided? How many people got swayed by this trailer? Um, you know, blue mm. Bloober team. You got to be real careful saying that. No, that don't call them there. Blooper team. No, no. Uh, they they said that the trailer was handled by Konami, not by them, and that maybe it's not a great representation of, of the work. Um, and they also asked the fans to uh, just, give them, just give us a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is really funny. So I read this on IGN. Apparently, it was an interview with Rolling Stone, like the magazine. No, I don't know why. Yeah, that's Ro weird. is Rolling Stone getting in the gaming? Like, are they do gaming articles? Hell if I know, Randy. I don't know. But they did an interview with Rolling Stone, and they basically said, like, look, I know the trailer wasn't great, but Konami put that together. That wasn't us. And yeah. just trust us. Like, you should give it a chance because it's we think it's really good. We think you'll like it if you'll just give it a chance. Yeah. And uh, that sounds a little weak. <laughs> yeah, we got some pretty interesting comments. I'll read about that in a minute. Yeah. Um, let's kick things off with uh, this one from John Adams. John Adams says, Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, but I really think it was lightning in a bottle. I know if I played the remake, I might have had a hard time not comparing it to the original. It also seems like Konami isn't giving it the reverence it deserves and is merely cashing in on all of Capcom's recent remakes. If people I trust tell me it's a meaningful experience, then I'll give it a chance, but I'm not interested in a cookie-cutter horror experience with a Silent Hill coat of paint on top. And there it is, people. There it is. Cashing in on Capcom's recent releases. Remakes. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's literally the first thing I said when I saw a trailer from this game. I, I I remember I made the joke to Randy, like, that looks like the Leon we have at home. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, this is not the first game that has looked at the, you know, like Resident Evil 2, 3, 4 remakes and said, like, oh, people love those. Um, let's do one like that. We saw, heck, talked about Remedy earlier. Mm -hmm. We were talking about um, them Alan Wake 2. Did Heck talk about Remedy in. earlier? We did. We did a whole segment on it. But did Alan Heck. Wick 2 uh, took in a lot of inspiration from those remakes and, you know, incorporated them into the Saga Anderson sections of Alan Wick 2. Mm -hmm. We saw recently Alone in the Dark came back and tried to reinvent themselves as basically a Resident Evil remake style game. And now we have Silent Hill 2, who... Very famously, the original Silent Hill was, you know, basically called a Resident Evil clone, but a damn good one. Mm -hmm. And now they're just kind of doing it again. Maybe it'll work for them, though. Do you think it'll be a damn good one? <laughs> you know, looking at it, it's hard to get excited and think that it could happen. It is. It's hard but, to look at that and think like, because I haven't even played all the Resident Evil remakes. I played four and I played three. So I've still got two like ready to go, you know. Mm -hmm. um, why would I play this instead? You know, I, I don't know. Like, because when I see this, it makes me want to play a Resident Evil remake. <laughs> right, and and like uh, like John Adams said in this comment here, it could be that Silent Hill Two really was lightning in a bottle. Like it was just you know perfect for its time because we've mm -hmm. seen Silent Hill basically trend down sort of ever since. Yeah. They never were really able to get another success on the level of Silent Hill 2. They had some games that did decent, but a lot of games that didn't do well at all. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. 
I don't either. I, I've never I've never played a Silent Hill game, and I don't really know what to expect. I've always kind of figured that I would play the remake, um, mm-hmm. but but not if I hear it's bad. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna do yeah. that. Yeah, I plan on playing it. Um, I recently played through Silent Hill One, the PlayStation game, mm-hmm. and I adored it. I thought it was so good. Not that it was a good looking game. Not even that it really controlled that well, but the vibes were impeccable. I mean, it was just great. And I am super excited to play Silent Hill 2, the original. I want to play it right before I play the remake so I can compare and contrast. I'm afraid that by doing that, I'm going to really make the remake have a high bar, but that's what I want to do. Yeah, I guess it depends on how well the original still translates. You know, how well does it hold up? If the, if, if the first game held up so well, I expect the second one to be yeah probably hold up fairly well too. Yeah, I would say you're right. Yeah. All right, so we we've got some comments here that are actually from the IGN article that uh, that we got this information from. So I'm going to hit you here with a comment from uh, B1G Papa, who said, "This sounds like begging. Why do devs always shoot themselves in the foot?" Don't prove yourself with words. Prove yourself with product. I was willing to give it a chance, but if there were any doubts before, you damn sure just reinforced them. Yeah, I mean, like, it really is. Like, if they just hadn't said anything, you know, maybe people would give it a chance. But coming out and saying, like, guys, we just want you to give our game a chance. It doesn't seem confident at all. It seems like they're not confident in the game and they're just trying to like kind of does feel like begging a little bit. It definitely doesn't doesn't give off an air of confidence in your game. And even if if they're not the people who really did it, the gaming industry has burned people so many times like people just don't do that anymore. People don't just trust you anymore. You know, I mean, it just doesn't work, especially when you don't have a product to stand on, you know. Right. I mean, like in Bloober Team. They've done some other horror games, but they're they're not even that well known for doing great horror games. They're kind of known as the studio that puts together eh horror games, you know? Yeah. And people aren't looking so, for eh, Randy. No, not with Silent Hill 2, they're not. No, they're you not. You know, I think their most recent game was The Medium, which is one that I was really excited about until it came out and then all the reviews were just like it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I, I don't know anything about that game specifically, but I know that I don't know much about Bloober Team. You know, so it's not like you're telling me that, you know, Square is making this or yeah, or Capcom, God forbid. <laughs> you know, like... I'm looking up what else they've done, like, see what other games they're really known for. Oh, they did the Blair Witch in 2019. I do think people like that game okay. They did Observer in 2017, Layers of Fear in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, they've had, yeah. Again, none of these completely lighting the world on fire. No, no, they, it, exactly. Like you said, you know, meh horror games. And here, here they are, like, you know, working on like the freaking Holy Grail for some people. You know, so right, yeah. I mean, like Silent Hill Two really is, in many people's minds, the greatest horror game of all time. Mm-hmm. It's it's considered one of the greatest games of all time, and then on top of that, it's one of the best horror games. So they've yeah. definitely got a product that you have to treat with just the utmost respect and the utmost reverence. And mm-hmm. are they? It's hard to tell, but what we've seen so far is a little concerning. You know, I feel like we kind of relate to their current situation. You know, they, like you said, they've inherited or, or you know, they have this this product that deserves the utmost respect. It's heralded within the industry. You know, people will sing songs of this long after we're gone. And here they have the chance to, to reinvent it and hopefully improve upon it. You know, I feel like that more or less is what we're doing this morning. Right? I feel like, you know, where we're going, where I'm going with this, you know. <laughs> We, we, we have re repurposed, remade what most people I believe would probably consider the, to be the best gaming podcast, you know, that's ever been, you know, we we go into this, go into this live format, you know, it's, but I, but I hope this, my hopes 
are, that blooper team is watching and that they're paying attention to the way that we are freaking sticking this landing so that, <laughs> so that maybe we can serve as a little inspiration uh, to them as they undertake this, this monumental project. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, tell me if I, if you feel like I'm stepping, uh, you know, out of bounds here, but no, like you're not every... stepping out of bounds at all. Yeah. I just hope that, uh, the blue routine people, when they're watching this, they know how to read through a hefty layer of sarcasm. Um, maybe well, they will. I hope they don't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you well, want to move on another... to our next comment? <laughs> yeah. Let's do it, move on. We got a comment. This is from one of the best usernames ever. Red dead Tui. Um, who said, if you're worried about people not buying it, maybe release a demo. And then Violet Nocturna responded <laughs> with, we know that they won't. Yeah. I Actually, Violet Nocturna said, we don't know that they won't. Oh, um, oh, I just completely, I, I read into that the way I wanted it to be, which was I like, know. we know that they won't. Yeah, I just we, left out a word. We know that they won't. We don't know. So I, <laughs> I wanted to put that, that response. Cause I felt like it, it was, you know, they're right. We don't know that they won't, but at the same time, red dead to I wanted to say that name too is, is totally right. You know, if they want to put people at ease and they have, you know, the, 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 the gumption about it and the integrity, um, maybe they'll release a demo. You know, I, I think that's a great idea. And, and, you know, we saw that with a game like stellar blade, you know, and stellar blade didn't even, Nobody even knew what to expect from Stellar Blade. It's not like they had a, a lofty goal to meet, you know, but they were confident in the game. They put out a demo. People liked it, and then people played the game, and I, th I think mostly people liked it. Yeah, I think that that's a perfect example. You ha They had to prove themselves, mm -hmm. and putting out the demo really eased a lot. Of, like I don't think a lot of people would have given it a try if they had to pay full price, but if they could just play a little bit of it and say, okay, this is worth playing. And we're seeing demos be way more common now like it seems like the age of demos is back. It reminds me of back when we were kids when yeah. there were so many demos out. Yeah. But um, I really doubt. And like I said, I was reading into this and I made the reply <laughs> exactly what I expected it to be, which we is know we know won't. that they won't. But I, I don't think they're going to. I really don't. I think they're relying on the fact that it says Silent Hill 2. Mm -hmm. That's what they're relying on for this. Well... I, I agree with you. I, I don't, I don't expect a demo, especially after that rough trailer and the, you know, the clear, like y'all please clap kind of energy. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I do think it would be a great move. If the game is good, it would be an excellent move. If the game is bad, it would be like the worst thing they could do. Cause and there's going to be people that are going to buy it just cause it says silent hill on it. Right. And if they release a shitty demo, <laughs> then I don't know. They might lose some of those people. What was it like? I think Balan Wonderworld mm -hmm. put out a demo. And everyone was like, thank God they put out a demo for this game because no one will buy it now. You know, but it's, I think it's good either way, whether it, you know, if it's a good game, it'll, they'll make them money. And if it's a bad game, it saves everybody from buying it. Uh, yeah, you're right. And Kit says, if they have the integrity, a demo would be great. Uh, not sure if we can expect more CEO boo-hoo. But people worked hard on this. I sure didn't, but somebody did. <laughs> yeah, I would hate. Yeah. I mean, at, mm. at the same time, though, I mean, yes, people do work hard on these. And Absolutely. it could be that the team at Bloober Team has a lot of respect and love and passion towards recreating Silent Hill 2. And it could be that the funding just isn't there. Because honestly, that's what it looks like to me more than anything mm -hmm. is that it doesn't feel like it's had the appropriate amount of money and time put into it. Yeah. And, the, and you know, when you tell me, I don't know, I can't help but think about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet when you say things like that, like, mm -hmm. like a, just a, a heralded franchise that clearly like just didn't have the polish. Uh, but I don't know if that game lacked for money. It may have just lacked for polish, but I don't know. It looks rough, man. I don't know. I watched the demo. I'm not, or the, I mean the, the trailer and, and I, I was not sold. I, I was completely reinforced. I mean, I even put hashtag Leon. We have at home in our outline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, like it is obvious that they're trying to do this in the vein of the resident evil remakes, which I mean, it makes sense because those games are phenomenal and people have loved playing them. 
Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that they would try to take an old horror franchise and do the same, give it the same treatment. Yeah. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad idea. No, it's clearly not a bad idea because those Capcom games are great. Like, mm -hmm. clearly it can be done well and, and it can be well received. But but it just, I, I would just like to see, and maybe when you get into the game, it won't seem like a blatant kind of thing. Maybe it won't. But right. just based on the little trailer I watched, it kind of looks that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it very, very, very similar. Very. But in like a knockoff kind of way. Like you yes. said, you know, it's like, it's like the off-brand version of it. And I don't know. I just got to play it. That's the thing. We just got to, well, either someone's got to play it. We got to have people out there forming opinions on it. And then we can really decide if it's worth doing. But things mm -hmm. are not looking too hot at the current moment.